Hello everybody, my name is Teddy and in this video series and especially in this first video, I would like to present to you the Garmin Montana series of GPS uh, handheld navigation systems. This series is mainly pointed at the Montana 610 and the Montana 680, but most of the information will also be valid for the Montana 600 and 650 series of GPS navigational system. Uh, first of all, a little disclaimer, I am in no association with Garmin or with any distributor related to Garmin, so this GPS uh, is my own and uh, it was, was paid for, so this is no demo item. And I would like to present to you the technical features of this um, GPS unit first, because right now there are some videos on YouTube uh, that display the 600 and 650, but there are virtually none that will show you the 610 and 680. And since those are the recently re uh, released new GPS units, well, I thought you might like to have a look at them. Before we start, just a little other information about the Garmin Montana series of devices. You can distinguish between them uh, by color. The newer 610 and 680 models have a black plastic frame. The older ones, the 600 and 650, will have a gray, a dark gray frame. And you can distinguish between the, um, the model by looking at this colored band. The um, 610 has a green band, the 680 has a red-ish band, as well as the 650 has a red band and the 600 has a yellow band so just so you can distinguish between them. Most of the features I will now talk about will be true for all of the Garmin Montanas, so it doesn't matter which one you look at. Um, I will tell you where the difference is. So um, let's start with the outer dimensions uh, of the device. These are roughly seven and a half by 14 and a half centimeters and the devices will be 3.6 centimeters wide in this area over here. The screen size is four inches across, so it is five by nine centimeters. The resolution is 272 by 480 pixels. And the display type is a transflexive TFT touchscreen with six uh, no with 65,000 colors. And transflexive in this case means there is a mirroring element behind the display itself. So when you use the display in bright daylight or under the light like I do here, um, then you do not have to activate the display background illumination. Um, because it works like reading from a piece of paper rather than reading from your smartphone where you know when you are outside and it's bright and you want to use your smartphone you have to really turn up the display um, yeah, brightness to, so you can read something. This works uh, in a totally different way. So the brighter it is, the better you can read your display. The other thing is this device is not multi-touch um, capable. So you cannot pinch to zoom like you would do on your smartphone. Um, but this is a good thing in this situation because um, as well as being water resistant and to some extent water tight, these uh, devices can be used with gloves and that is what you want to do outside. When you, when you have a smartphone you can often not use that with gloves because uh, the display type and the touch type will not allow for that. You will have to use your finger or some touch sensitive material on a glove. In this case the, there are just two layers of uh, membrane in this display and you can basically touch touch on this display with everything. You can use your finger, you can use a glove, you can could even use a little stick to do that. So um, that is why this is important and uh, since it is um, designed to be used outside and uh, maybe on a motorcycle, using this type of display and touch display makes very much sense. Um, the weight is 289 grams when you use the lithium-ion rechargeable battery that Garmin provides. 
and 333 gram when you use three AA batteries. The next point will be the battery longevity. If you use this device with the lithium ion battery that is provided by Garmin, which basically look like these, you can get up to 16 hours of um, yes, service time with one single battery. This is of course without any extra accessories um, in conjunction with the device and of course without display illumination. When you use high quality AA batteries you can even get up to 22 hours of battery life which is really really a lot. The rating of the device is IPX7 so this is to some extent watertight. Um, all of the devices feature a barometrical height sensor so the device can either calculate the height it is at by using the GPS signal but then you will need a very good GPS signal to do that. You can also use the um, barometrical height so the device will use the pressure of the air to basically find out how high the device is right now. Now a little difference, the Montana 680 and the older Montana 650 will feature a camera on the back side which would be located over here. The 610 and the 600 will not feature that camera. Note however, if you upload picture to the device, you can view that with every of the Montana devices. Also, all of the Garmin Montana devices, as well as a lot of other uh, types of Garmin devices will feature wireless um, connection between the devices. That means if you have a Montana and another Garmin device which is um, wireless capable then you can um, copy like routes, waypoints, tracks and other information from one device to another without using a cable which is um, very useful if you use the device, for example, um, on a motorcycle and if you meet someone else with a Garmin device, you can on the route um, share your, your, your waypoints or your route information. So this is very, very useful when you ride in a group with more than one of those GPS devices. None of those devices will feature any pre-installed maps. They will have a basic overview map, uh, but that is so rough and is a worldwide map. You can use it to get from one end of the country to the other, uh, but it's not very well suited for precise navigation, so you cannot use temperature -turn navigation with those maps. However, if you install another device, uh, another map, sorry, if you install another map on the device, or if you buy uh, a map uh, from Garmin, or even if you upload a map that is turn-by-turn -turn navigation capable, you can use all of these devices, all of the Montanas, uh, with turn-by-turn -turn navigation. Um, all of them, of course, are able to install those um, yeah, turn-by-turn -turn navigation maps, and the device will feature in internal storage. Uh, the internal storage of the two new devices is 2.7 gigabytes, the um, storage of the old devices, however, is even larger, 3 gigabytes. So you can um, roughly install uh, the map of Germany and um, some extra little bits and bobs onto the internal storage of the device. If you want to install more than those maps, you can install a micro SD card which of course you will know and they look like this and you can install this in the back of the device um, we are gonna have a look at that in a moment how this works and you can install those uh, cards I am not a hundred percent sure how large that card can be eight gigabytes like I have here work well 16 should also work I am not sure if larger cards will work uh, you sh have to try that out or read up on that um, all of those devices um, will feature customizable points of interest, so you can add points of interest to your liking. Uh, the device can store up to 4000 waypoints, uh, up to 200 routes and up to 200 tracks with 10,000 points each. So that should give you enough storage to use your points of interest and waypoints and all that stuff. 
all of those devices of the Gamma Montanas are able to use turn-by-turn -turn navigation, like I said before, always if the uh, map material you installed on the device also support that. All of them can do paperless geocaching. Um, there is a little caveat to that and we will get to geocaching in the geocaching section. I will not tell you about this right now, but um, it's not as good as using geocaching with your smartphone for one for one very particular reason. So this device does of course no, not have any data uplink, so you will always have out of date uh, information on the device basically. Um, they both have a calendar, moon and sun calendar, and hunting season calendar. Um, they have a tides table. If you have blue shard installed on the device, which is an optional feature, uh, it's uh, for marine navigation, I guess. I have never used that. You can calculate areas. Uh, like I said, you can use uh, the picture viewer to view pictures on the device. And. Um, all of those devices can be used in conjunction with extra accessibles. For example, you can get a temperature sensor, you can get, for example, other sensors for the device like a heartbeat sensor. So when you're out uh, jogging or doing sports, you can monitor your health and your, 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 your vital f features, uh, your, I mean your vital information, like your heartbeat with this device, um, if you want to do that. Um, the older ones will feature GPS and the newer ones will feature GPS and GLONASS receiver, like I said before. This is basically all of the technical details on those devices. The official retail price for the Montana 680, that's the new one with the camera, is 579 euros, but you should get the device for about 500. The 610, that's a new one without the camera, will uh, retail officially for 529 euros. Uh, I got it for 450 euros. And of course the older, the 600 and 650, um, have an official retail price of about 500 euro right now, but that's no longer valid. So you should get them for f like 400, 350 euros, roundabout. So um, the question is, should you get an old one? Should you get a new one? The new one uh, basically have some new features inside, uh, notably the GLONASS, the feature of being able to use GLONASS navigation, and also some, some, some software features are newer. And the track manager is new in this one, which is really nice. So it's a nice feature. Um, if you already have a Montana 650 or 600, should you update? No, you should not basically because there are so little tiny feature uh, improvements in the device. If your old one works, keep your old one. This is basically the same device with very, very minor updates. So there's no need to update your device from a 600 to a 610 or something like that. Um, in the next part of the video, we will have a look on the outside of the device and also to some connection ports and have a look at the back of the device. So uh, stay tuned and I hope you liked this video so far. Please come back, please leave, um, leave a thumbs up or thumbs down and, and tell me what you liked, what you disliked. If you have questions, ask them um, and always feel free to, 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 yeah, subscribe to my channel and yeah, you know other deals. Um, but especially if you like the video, please feel free to share the video on social media. Um, I think a lot of people will be interested in these devices. And since there is no real coverage on YouTube about that, um, yeah, they might find this useful. Uh, so far, thanks for watching and I hope I will see you again. Bye bye.